In this tutorial, we're going to do something pretty fun, which is to create a pivot table within R. And the pivot table you're going to create will actually be an HTML file that then you can share with other people. And so this is pretty cool because this allows you to share your pivot table with others without them having direct access to the source data. In other words, they can't delete something by accident. So now that we're in R Studio, let's go to File, New File, and R Script to open up an R script editor here. And let's save this R script file doing a save as, I'll call it test, click save. I want to overwrite the existing one. And again, we're gonna be doing pivot tables in R today. There's a really cool package that does this. And so I'm gonna set the working directory. And specifically, I'm looking at my H drive our workshop folder is where I save the data, but the name of the data file I'm working with is employee demographics here. So I'm gonna do a quick copy there to get the exact name. It's a .csv file, so let's remember that. And I'll do set WD though first to set my working directory, which is my H drive, as I just mentioned, and our workshop folder here. And I will click run to set that. Alternatively, you could do session, set working directory, choose directory to find the folder in which you save that data file. Now let's read in the data and we'll use the install packages. If you haven't recently installed the reader package, um, go ahead and do that. This is what I'm gonna to use to read in the data. Uh, I'm not going to run the, re or run the install for the reader package because I've recently done this but I will use the library function with the reader package name as the sole argument within that function. And I'm gonna run that to access a particular function within it, which is the read underscore CSV function. And so I'm going to name this data file, just let's call it imp, um, let's, for, let's say employee demo, so imp demo and I'll name it using that left-hand arrow. So this is, I'm gonna call the new data frame imp data here, or imp demo. And then I'll do read underscore CSV is the name of that function from the reader package where we're gonna to use to read in the data. The, the name of the data file again is going to be employee demographics.csv. I saved this previously to get the exact name and I added the dot CSV function, which you'll need to do and make sure it's all in quotation marks there. So let's click run. And let's check out this data frame here. Okay, so pretty standard here, employee demographic information. Okay, just for the sake of exp for the sake of this demo, this will be just fine as we're gonna create a pivot table with it. Now, to create a pivot table like you would in that Microsoft made so famous with its Excel platform, um, we'll actually need to download three different packages. And so we'll do first install packages for a package that's called HTML widgets. So this is so you can open it in HTML, HTML web browser format. And then we'll also want to, let's copy this two more times because we also need to download, if we haven't already, the knitter package. And then finally, the focal package today is going to be the R pivot table package. And so it's all lowercase except the T in table is capitalized. Now, I've recently installed all of these, so I should be good to go. And we'll find out in a second if that's true. But the if you haven't, definitely install these three packages. Now, we'll only need to access, however, the R pivot table package. And so as a sole argument in the library function, I do R pivot table. Again, the T in table is capitalized, and let's click run next to that line. Okay, so actually working with this function, the, uh, the function that we're gonna be working with from this package is quite easy. In fact, it's the function name is the same as the package name. And so it's just R pivot table with a capital T for table. And the simplest way to do this is just to enter in as the sole argument within our parentheses the exact name of our data frame. So let's go ahead and do that. So our pivot table, click run. Okay, and so what you'll see over here is we have a typical pivot table that you would have in Excel. You can drag things just like in Excel. You can change 
um, what you're doing in terms of the type of analysis. You also have, you can do a heat map and you can adjust things just like this. So this is pretty cool, right? And we're doing this all within R. And you can see that just like you could select for job level, you can exclude certain levels and things like that within it um, by clicking, unchecking the boxes and clicking apply. Now, if we want to export this, we can actually save this as a web page. So if we do that, it's gonna save by default to our working directory. So let's say test pivot table is what we're gonna call this. I'm gonna click save. And then let's go to my working directory folder, which is my R workshop folder. And I'm gonna do the most recently modified. And so here we see test pivot table, there we go. Okay, and so now this is actually something, this is a file you can sh share with other people. And so for instance, you can have them manipulate this in their web browser. It's pretty neat. And this is something that um, is nice because you're, anybody you're sharing this with can't touch the source data, can't accidentally delete something like maybe they could in Excel. And so here you kind of maintain the integrity of the source data there. And plus people get something fun to play around with and something that's meaningful too. So this gives, it's like people can create their own uh, dashboards in a sense. Okay, so that is one way that we can do it. We can also pre-specify things too. So let's copy and paste that function. And then let's add a couple arguments here. We can also specify ahead of time what we want to be included in the rows. So I'll use the rows equal argument here. And let's say that we want that job level variable, make sure I spell this exactly right. So job with a capital J and capital L, no space. And so we want that to be preset in our rows. And I'm gonna do a, a return here. And let's do calls equals. And so we can set what's gonna be in our column. And I'm gonna do the sex variable. So sex with a capital S, so I spelled that correctly. And let's go ahead and run this and watch what happens in our viewer here. Okay, so it comes preset. So you could essentially, if you really figured out that really awesome pivot table that you created, um, instead of having to remember the sequence of drags and clicks and so forth, you can actually specify it ahead of time in the syntax within the function with by these arguments. And so you can get it ready for you. It's, it's really, really nice. In fact, I think I prefer this over doing pivot tables in regular Excel. So I'm gonna copy this and add an additional argument here to show you something else you can do. And that is, I'm gonna add another argument that is uh, the, it's renderer name is equal to. And this is where you can specify whether you want a table, a heat map and so forth. So like here you can see, you have all these choices here. And so if you put this in quotation marks there. Make sure you put the variable names and quotation marks here as well. I forgot to mention that. Now let's run this again. This will update. Okay, now it automatically is going to render in a heat map format. So if you want to see what some additional arguments are for this particular package, use the help function from R. And so let's type in the name of that function there with the question mark in front of it to ask for help here. Let's run that. And here in our help viewer, we will see that there's a number of other different types of, uh, a number, number of different arguments that we can use, sorters, aggregator names, um, values, and so forth that we can use. And you can scroll through this. I think they have some examples here using that infamous Titanic data set that everybody seems to use. So yes, here you can see, you can also list using the combined function, uh, you can list more than one row or column at a time as well. So this wraps up the tutorial on pivot tables using R. Thank you.